Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craftastic, and today I'm going to show you how to make a contact card or contact sheet in Silhouette Studio. A contact card is similar to a business card, but I would also call it the planner community's version of a calling card. It's a little larger than a business card and it ha usually has graphics that represent you as the giver um, and it's something that you would share with people that you meet at planner meetups, conferences, or other planner related events. You can actually order customized uh, contact cards from various planner sticker shops. If you're not up to making your own or you just prefer to order, CocosVisionShop.com does offer contact cards. If you want to make your own, I'm going to show you how to do that now. So I'm working in the business edition of Silhouette Studio. I do believe that pretty much everything that I do here you can also do in the free basic version of Silhouette Studio. So let's get started. I've opened up a new canvas or artboard and I'm going to just go ahead and save that right off. So I'm going to save as to hard drive and this is the folder that I want and let's do this contact card two. Okay. So I'm going to make these cards more of a vertical orientation. So I'm going to leave my orientation at vertical. Then I'm going to come over here to my registration marks and I'm going to turn them on. And I want to leave everything like it is. Now I need to pull myself some guidelines onto the artboard or the canvas or the mat. Keep in mind we have to stay out of the hashed area which is around the registration marks. That is so that the machine can actually read those marks if you're using this with a silhouette. You can also use this uh, once it's complete with your Cricut and when we get to the end I will show you how to actually use it with a Cricut as well. But for now we're going to leave these registration marks in place and they will also help if you're using a Cricut so that you do not make your um, image area too big for what Cricut is able to handle. Okay, so I'm going to go up here to the ruler and pull down a guide and I'm just going to go right to the edge of where the hash marks are. I'm going to do that at the bottom too. Now from what I understand, the basic version of Silhouette Studio does not uh, include the rules unless something has changed. If that is the case, you can always make your own rules by drawing a line using the line tool. Draw a line. The only thing is you need to make sure that you delete those before you get ready to print and cut. So. It's the same thing. Just make yourself a line and drag it where you need it to be. Okay. So I've got the guides at the top and bottom. Now I want to drag them over to the sides. So here's the one for the left. And here's the one for the right. So I kind of giving myself a rectangular area in the center here to work with. Now I want to divide this in half, vertically and horizontally, so that way we can have four contact cards. So I am going to zoom in here and draw a rectangle to fit inside of that box. Okay. This part is not quite <laughs> the way I would like it to work, but we're going to make it work. So. If you see here in the middle, on the top and bottom, there's a little square. And also on each side, there's a little square. That's showing us where the middle is. So I already know that the center of our full sheet here is 
uh, five and a half and then four and a quarter vertically, five and a half horizontally, four and a quarter vertically. So just to make sure that I'm absolutely in the center because I don't know if my guide marks um, that I put down are actually the same distance all the way around. So just to be on the safe side, I would put the rectangle in the center and use it to divide my rectangle space. So I'm going to drag a guideline down. Let's click on the box again to make sure we're in the center. So we are. Now let's drag one over from the side here and try to make it to the center. So we've divided our box. Now we can get rid of it because we just use that as a guide. So now we have four equal size boxes. So now we're going to see what size our boxes are so we kind of know what size we have to work with. We're also going to be using layers to keep everything organized. So let's open the layers palette. That's this little icon here. And this will be working on our first layer. The reason I'm doing this, you can actually hide layers and lock them. So, and the layers stack on top of each other. So layer one will be on the bottom, and then the next layers that we create will go on top. So we're going to be working with layer one. I'm going to use the rounded rectangle tool. And in this first rectangular area, I'm going to draw a rectangle. OK, let's zoom in so we can see the size. So this is helping me determine what size we're going to make the contact card. Um, you can have a predetermined size if you choose. I like to try to get as much use out of my paper as possible. So I do it this way to maximize my paper use. All right, so it looks like our rectangle is 2.812 by 4.62. Let's go ahead and change that to four as far as the height and then for the width i'm thinking that's a little small so i'm going to see what three looks like i think three is okay and it's not going to interfere with the hash area, even though it's a little distant from our guideline and it goes over a little, I think that's a good size. So, and we want to leave a little space in between if possible. Let's see, is that going to cause a problem at the bottom? I don't think so. I think we're good. So I'm going to line this up here, and then I'm going to pull myself a guideline over. For the a new adjusted size. So this is the three by four. So the next step we're going to do is create this is going to be our base. Okay. So let's go ahead and name this layer base. So you just double click where it says layer one and it should gray out and you're able to type in there. Okay, so in the next part of our base, we're gonna copy the base. So let's edit, copy. Then we're gonna go to edit, paste in front. So that what that does is give us a copy of that initial base layer. We're going to use this to make the header space. Now, I want my header to be about a half an inch tall. So without having to move anything and do any measuring, I'm going to come over here and make another rectangle. And oh, I still got the rounding on. Let's do a squared rectangle. OK. So, well, I want it to be about a half an inch, but let's see. Let's try 0.475 for the height of this rectangle, okay? 
I think that's wide enough. So we're going to do 0 0.475. I'm going to zoom in and drag this up to the edge of our base. So the top edge of the rectangle to the top edge of the base. And I'm going to use that as a guide. So now I'm going to go back over here and choose the squared rectangle again. And now I'm going to draw a rectangle with the top beginning at the bottom of that one, of the little guide one that we just created. And so I'm going to start there. And I'm going to make sure I'm outside of our base all the way around. So the left, right, and bottom, I need to be outside of the base. We're going to use this to create a new shape for our header. Okay, so now we can get rid of our measuring rectangle. So I'm going to select one of the base shapes and this rectangle that we made on the top. And to select both, you would click on the base, hold your shift key down, and click on the rectangle. And that has both of them selected. Then I'm going to go over here to the Modify panel and choose Subtract. What that's going to do is cut anything in this rectangle out. We're just going to get rid of it and delete it. So this is what we're going to do, subtract. So now we have a nice little rounded header at the top. And we can change the color of it. And I usually, this is an item that we do not want cut. So I usually take the red outline off. And then I'm going to fill it with black because I want my header to be black. Okay. Now, if you want to uh, add bleed for silhouette, what you would do is select it, do an offset. Select your header, do an offset. Decide how much bleed you want to include. I'm going to do 0 0.0625. Okay, then you would actually fill that with, you. first of all, take the red off because we don't want that to cut. And then you fill that with black. So what happens is it goes a little outside of where you're actually going to cut. And in case your silhouette shifts a little bit or the cut is a little off, your color will still go all the way to the edge of your design. Now that did add a little to the bottom of it. You could always go in and adjust. Let me put this on a separate layer for now. Um, let's go back to the layers. Let's add a new one. So what I did was I cut the bleed off for now. And in this separate layer, I'm going to name that bleed. And I'm going to paste it on that layer. Edit, paste. Just make sure I have that layer selected. OK, so if I close, if I hide it, you won't see the bleed. See there? So it is a little thicker down here. Takes up a little more space, but you could always adjust that yourself. OK? For now, I'm going to leave the bleed off. Well, no, let's go ahead and turn it on, because we want to come over here to send and start turning off some of the things that we do not want to cut. You could do this all at one time once you have finished with the design. I like to do it as I go. It's easier, and that way I don't forget to turn them off. Okay, so let's go to Send. And if you, let me zoom in. So you can see everywhere that that red line is, is where your silhouette will cut if you're using silhouette. Um, you don't need this bleed if you plan on using this with a Cricut. But we're going we're gonna to turn off the cut on the bleed. Tell it no cut. 
And we're also going to turn off the cut on our black header space here. I'm going to have to go back and hide the bleed layer. <laughs> See, this is why I do it as I go, because it can get complicated with selecting. Let's go back to send. I, I hid the bleed layer, and I'm back to send. Uh, and now I can select the header. Okay. So as it is now, let me go back and turn the bleed back on. Send and zoom in so you can see what is going on here. Okay. So you see you have your bleed. You have the actual shape of the contact card. That's the only thing that we, at this point, want to cut out is the contact card. Back to design. So with the base intact, we're going to go ahead and lock it. So it's locked. So now is a good time to start collecting the graphics that you would like to use on your base. And we will go over how to add those as well as um, social media logos and information to the base to actually create the contact card in the next part of this video. I hope this was helpful and that you enjoyed learning the basics of how to create a contact card. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Also make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that little gray bell so that you'll receive notifications each time I upload a new video. Be sure to check the community tab and my stories for updates throughout the week. Also check us out over at patreon.com slash scrapcraftastic for exclusive content and digital downloads. Visit my other channel, Journal Life's Journey, for live craft videos, junk journals, and weekly vlogs. You can find me across social media at scrapcraftastic. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!